it asks you to engage with another. And it takes what I will call an embrace between two people, and it makes it something immortal. It makes it something that lasts forever. And uh, in this world, I feel like so many moments feel so fleeting, but every single moment that we live really does affect us for the rest of our lives. And you might forget it in your head, but every moment you have ever lived lives forever in your gut, in your soul, whatever you want to call it, where every opinion that you have, every feeling that you have, is shaped by a moment that you don't remember. It's shaped by a billion moments that you don't remember because they're a part of you forever. So to really take an embrace and say, I'm going to make this forever, um, it's calm. It's calm. And it's really beautiful. Man, Squeeb, I want to pass you the mic for a second. Traveling creature, you want to... Man, Squeeb, what is the traveling creature? I think you set me up absolutely perfectly to talk about traveling creature because... You know, everything you said is, is a perfect sort of summary of, of what we're about and, and what we stand for and what we're trying to build and the ethos behind what we do. And to me, Traveling Creature feels like a culmination of, of so many months of, of preparation and work and, and figuring out who we want to be and what we want to do. And it represents essentially that meeting with this new technology that we think can allow us to bring those things that we want to bring to the world, love, cooperation, friendship, um, you know, some of these things may not live on in our brains forever and our memories forever, but they are going to live on on the blockchain. And and doing that and, and producing experience like this is what we really want to do. Um, and I'm not sure how many of you have actually interacted with, with the traveling creature yet, but I would love for you to check it out. Essentially what it is, is um, we've decided that you know, from watching the space and, and you know, though Danny may sound like a poet and an artist, he is also a, a D-Gen and a, and a blockchain little enthusiast like the rest of us. And we've been watching the space for so long. And, um, you know, we see, we see projects release a second collection all the time. Um, but we've never really seen it be something super special. And um, this is sort of our take on creating this new collection of artworks. But, it, but instead of doing it in the traditional way where we, we really just sell those artworks, um, we create them and we sell them, or even we just create them and we give them away. Um, in this case, what we've done is we've, we've created this collaborative art experience that essentially has this, this wall to jump over if you want to participate. And that wall is, is interacting with someone else, is collaborating, is making a friend, is, is going onto Discord or going onto Twitter and, and making a plan and spending some time actually interacting with humans instead of just watching charts or watching numbers. And um, if you do that, and if you're willing to, to, to participate in that experience, um, which is collaborative and which requires that effort, you're able to create a new piece that lives on forever. And it's customized by you and a person that you, that you made it with. And um, there are so many examples of, of, ways that people have done that you know I, I sent them to my friends i sent them to my family um, i sent them to strangers and we want all that to happen because we want people to create art pieces that represent all these different relationships that they have um, and that they've built whether they're new or old um, so how do we do that we we created this website it's creature.travel you can go on there and, and if you if you have a creature uh, one of the original ten thousand creatures um and you receive one of these new tokens that we've created called a traveling creature. Um, when you receive that traveling creature token and then you send it to someone else, you receive a piece of art that is essentially a piece of art living on forever that, that depicts your creature and the person's creature that you sent to. Um, and we think it's been a really beautiful experience so far. And um, yeah, I, I would love to hear feedback and questions. And, and Cleo, I know we've collectively been talking for quite a while. I appreciate you being so patient. <laughs> I literally uh, just looked at the clock. I was like, damn, I uh, uh, did not realize. Um, I, wanna, I'm, I'm, I promise you, Cleo, I'm going to shut up. and you're ne I will never talk again unless you ask me to. But 
I want to I want to echo one thing that that Van said in 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 the simplest words for 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 listeners. Um, the traveling creature is an experience that follows a story that that that, that it really it, it immerses you into the story. It allows you to participate in the story, and the story is that of a spirit where the spirit was born. And there's a cartoon of this. The spirit was born of the universe inside of this forest. In the middle of a forest, a spirit was born. And, and it is this type of spirit that usually, upon being born, hops into the body of a creature. Spirit's born, hops in the body of a creature. That creature finds another creature, and the spirit travels through it. And that creature finds another creature. The spirit travels through it. And these spirits continue to travel through living beings. And in an embrace where that spirit gets to travel, it's something that kind of brings us together. It bonds us. I touch the hand of Van Squeeb and the spirit travels from my heart to his. We're connected. But the spirit that this story follows was born in the middle of the woods. And the woods were abandoned. So year after year goes by, and the spirit, whose destiny was to travel, builds up all of this energy, and there's no way for it to move because there's nobody around. There's no creature for it to hop into. So it grows, and it grows, and it grows until it's as tall as the treetops. And a creature in a nearby village looks in the distance, and it sees something odd, and it walks towards the woods and it enters the woods and what does it encounter it encounters this giant spirit and the spirit enters the creature and the creature is filled with all of this energy and it runs back and finally the spirit can be free traveling from creature to creature to creature so we took the spirit from that story after making it into a cartoon um, and introducing people to that sort of myth you know the mythology um and uh and we made the spirit into a token so i start off with that token and i send it to van squeeb and that experience of that interaction between me and van squeeb it creates an, an artwork of my creature and van squeeb's creature together then van squeeb now has the traveling creature he has the spirit and he sends it to cleo and Cleo and him are now bonded. So it generates an artwork of Van Squeeb's creature and Cleo's creature together. Now Cleo is like, I have the traveling creature. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to send it to print. It gets us to connect with one another. And it takes that connection and, it, and that's what it immortalizes. And now I will never talk again, Cleo. Thank you and I'm very sorry. I love you. Okay. First of all, um, I want to make it abundantly clear that we would like you to talk as much as possible because everybody really enjoys listening to a creative genius. Um, in fact, I actually wanted to mention this. One of our members, Emmy, had said that while listening to this AMA, everybody feels like they're meditating. And I think that's such a beautiful thing to say about this AMA. And that's exactly how you feel in the presence of, of Danny Cole. So I really am happy that you guys kind of went into more detail about how your art is kind of participatory and immersive and what that is, especially in this culture, you know, Danny and Squeeb, you guys have been around in the NFT space quite a bit, and I'm sure you're kind of seeing how it's evolving. And the current culture is more about tokenomics, utility, hype, and all these kinds of things. And then we have a project like creature world something that is magical especially in such a dark time it kind of allows people to not only feel like they have a creature who is a friend but allows them to also become that artwork bond with other people create more artwork um you know even things like watching danny on live um drawing and creating new pieces of art so in this type of culture where you know everything is you know nfts are supposed to be centered around art but obviously as of late it has kind of gotten pushed back a little bit you guys have always retained um as i've mentioned earlier the title of a stable coin just because 
you guys are a project in your own niche you know nobody has really done what danny cole has done the type of brands the type of clothing line you know the clothing line alone is just gorgeous um I did have a question kind of regarding one of the experiences that you talked about. Before the traveling creature, obviously, it was all about finding your voice. And I think that is just so gorgeous. I don't know why there was um, some pushback on that, because I think that is such an innovative and um, magical experience. And now that I'm looking at your creature that you have you know the main Danny Cole creature the one that's on Twitter I'm noticing that you chose your voice as the singing um, voice the singing creature and I'm wondering what led you to that decision and also I've always been curious is your profile picture something that you custom made for you was it something that was random that resonated with you um, if it was something custom what made you kind of choose the traits that you did and you know most importantly choose the voice that you did so I have I have some I have some phenomenal responses and I first of all thank you and and people like people were were echoing in the chat um, a real appreciation for you and your insights and I I want to verbalize that myself this is like you and I have not really had the opportunity to speak that much before and I'm like really um, struck by your intelligence and. Um, by your thoughtfulness um you are yeah you're a phenomenal person to be speaking to right now and i'm, I'm very grateful to to be here um speaking with you um thank you danny so, I'm, you're yeah. gonna make me cry but i'm gonna let you continue <laughs> that is a beautiful compliment and thank you so much i'm literally a reflection of you so i really appreciate <laughs> that warmth but thank go on so answer, answer all of this with with all the magical insightfulness i know you have Thank you. So what I'll say is I actually, I actually do understand why there was a lot of pushback on The Creature Finds Its Voice. Um, and, um, and, and, I, and I could, I could pick that apart, but uh, there's, I, I learned a really great lesson from, um, from a friend of mine who, who does art that reaches a lot more people in the world than my art does yet. And um, he said, my whole team goes by this mentality that when we're working on something, um, now I'm like pacing around my apartment. When we're, when he, he, he told me when we're working on something, we have a rule that we don't talk about it because any of that energy that we're putting into talking about it outside of, of working on it um, is energy that actually is taken away from our ability to work on it. Uh, and, you know, energy really is a finite resource. Um, so I, I, I do really genuinely deeply understand where like where and why the pushback happened and i believe um i believe in the validity of it um in a lot of ways i also really am proud of it but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna delve into that um like i i'm super fucking proud of the second journey genuinely i'm i'm, I'm, I'm proud of the creature finds its voice um but i'm i'm probably the biggest critic of it too <laughs> maybe maybe not but i might be whatever um so my creature um my creature i found it i did not choose it specifically for me i actually had made a creature specifically for me um and and then i was like looking at the numbers um of of all the possible creatures that that could be generated and it became very clear that the odds of the creature that I had drawn actually being generated for the final collection were so unbelievably improbable that I was not that that I would not wind up with the creature that I imagined um, prior to to generating the collection and minting it. Um, so when Creature World came out, um, a lot of people haven't been in the shoes of making a project. You actually. Um, you you can access funds immediately, um, and I took all of my money prior to the collection. I took literally all of my money and spent it trying to mint creatures. <laughs> um, but so then the money for Creature World hits, and I'm like, I need to buy creatures. 
because I like this. This is my artwork. I want this. Um, and I was looking, and I was looking, and I was looking, and I, I landed on this creature um, that that I that I currently use. Um, and uh, and I was like, I had tried. I think I I think I had tried a different creature. I'm 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 getting lost. So I'll I'll take a step back. Um, I think there's a very relatable experience that I had that sounds crazy to people outside of this space, which is you feel like the picture that you have on Twitter. You feel like the picture that you have on Discord. And I tried changing my profile picture a few times. And each time, I felt like a different person talking. I felt like, you know, we are spoken to and, and perceived out in the world connected to our physical appearances. Um, if you entered somebody else's body and you spent a day in their life, you would notice that people talk to you differently. It, I'm not saying for better or for worse, but people would talk to you differently. And in the same way, based on what picture you have paired with any words that you're seeking to share, any messages you're seeking to share, I felt very different. Um, and when I put on the creature that I currently have um, as my profile picture, it's actually not my profile picture on Discord, funny enough. Um, it is my profile picture on Twitter. Um, and it is this, this creature with... Um, it has a crush, so it has heart cheeks, um, and uh, and it's in space, and it and it has a suit made out of clouds on. Um, when I put that as my profile picture, I was like, I feel, I feel like me, and and I, and 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 I almost took that feeling for granted because I got a more expensive creature, spent like a hundred thousand dollars on a creature and it's one of the craziest creatures and um and i made it my profile picture for like a day and i was like no i like my creature and i changed it back and i haven't i haven't switched it you know that's that's me um then for the creature finds its voice um some of the thought behind it was um the outcome of the creature finds its voice um, was, you know, you, you enter the creature world and, uh, and there, are, there are these different communities of creatures that have convened based on how they use their voice. And you explore, um, you know, you go to the woods and you see the creatures that have convened based on that they sing together. You go into the mountains and, and you visit the creatures that, that only smirk, their lips never part because they're in silence together but they're still within one another's presence. You go to, um, you know, you go to the hills where the creatures play together and they have an open smile. Um, they were, and, 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 you know, they're, they're happy. They're, they're, they're laughing. Um, they're joyous. You know, all there, and I could go on, but there were all these different places that you could go. And, and, and you get to ask yourself, well, what feels like me? And to have that, what feels like me, translate to your outward presentation of oneself. Um, my thought was that, be it conscious or subconscious, um, I could look at a given person based on the creature that they have and, and know that this is a detail of your piece. This is a detail of, of you that is deliberate. This is not a coincidence. You did this. Um, and, and, I, and, and it's a pretty safe bet that people that make decision A probably have something in common with each other. People that make decision B probably have something in common with each other. Um, and I chose, I chose the singing creature. I chose the singing creature's mouth um, because um, there's, I saw the singing creatures as being... Um, a, a generous breed, um, even though that there's even though you know they're, they're singing. A lot of people might think of singing um, as uh, perhaps 
what I'll say is, I don't know how many people, when they hear singing, their first thought is, um, is generosity. It might be to some, but to me, you know, those creatures that were singing in the forest, they're singing to, like, they're singing with one another, but if you look at them, they're singing upwards towards the sky. And, um, and as they sung together in this clearing in the woods, um, they generated this, this rainbow mist. And that mist traveled upwards towards the sky and covered the world like a blanket. And, and to me, it was this way of saying, you know, we together can release this vibration that, that covers the world and, and, and impacts all of us. And that's, um, that's you know, another, uh, it's another form of, of whether, whether I can say that's me now or that's, you know, where I would like to be. Um, they say dress for the job that you want. Um, and I felt like that was me. But I'll tell you, funny enough, on the, if we're going to talk about, if we're going to touch on critique a little bit, in the last two minutes before the creature finds its voice closed, I changed the mouth back. I changed the mouth back to the happy creature. And there was something that I didn't take into account. And without... I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm biting my tongue if, if, if any team is here right now from Creature World. I'm not, there's no alpha in, in regard to this. Um, uh, I'll say that um, I definitely have, have, have taken some of these lessons um, and put them into a lot of what we have been making behind the scenes, like true secret projects, true, like, like no hints have been given. <laughs> um, but, um, I changed it back in the last two minutes before, before the traveling, or be, sorry, my bad, before the creature finds its voice closed. Um, people can be scared of change. I'm a person. Change is scary. I looked, you know, I was introduced to my creature with an open smile. And, and I did something that changed it. Um, and even though I myself am, you know, the artist, whatever, um, I found that piece and it sort of felt like that piece found me and I, and, 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 and to be the one to change it, I know how human I am. And I'm like, did I make the right decision? Did I fuck up this artwork? You know, was it better as it was? Did it, you know, and I was like, maybe it was better left untouched. And there's a difference. You know, there's a difference between getting something and change. Gaining something and change. Change is scary. Change will never not be scary. Um, and I learned, I haven't, I haven't, nobody's, nobody, no, nobody's seen really like this, like the, the, the result of this, of this sort of revelation yet. Um, um, you know, and, and everybody will, and I'm like, I don't want to, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ruin, um, any surprises, but, um, uh, I learned the beauty of, that distinction between gaining something new um, and altering something that exists. And I learned that it is anxiety provoking at times to alter something, um, but more pure in its excitement um, to make a new friend, you know, to, to, yeah. Beautiful, Danny. Thank you for that um, in-depth explanation about how your creature found its voice and, and kind of why you went back to what it was before. So another question I think a lot of people, I personally have always wondered as well, 
is pretty early on you were backed by Gary V, which everybody knows is a big deciding force in the space. Um, obviously comes with benefits. You know, it comes with pros and cons, just like every other gift in life. Um, we just wanted to hear a little bit more about how that experience has been, you know, kind of communicating with him as well as, you know, receiving the glory and also a lot of the critique that kind of follows that kind of endorsement. Sorry, I was like trying to turn my mic on and my phone screen had turned off for a second. Um, yeah, absolutely. I um, I am really so grateful to people that have a really close relationship with the knowledge I feel like Ty Lopez with knowledge, you know. Um, I I have um, I have a lot of gratitude for um, for people that that have this mindset that it is good for me to do good for the world. You know that I don't have to hoard. Um, I don't have to hoard resources that are really infinite. Um, I want to phrase this in a way that really um, delivers. Give me one second to hit my jewel one more time. I don't know if you could hear the jewel crackle, but it's um, it's like music to my ears <laughs> always. Um, what I'll say is, uh, and, and then I'll get like more specific. Um, I land in New York, and there are a lot of artists that have the mentality that I'm going to keep my, my secret sauce to me, to myself, because um, I don't want anyone else to do what I'm doing. And they don't realize that it's a good thing. It's truly good for me. It is good for you. It is good for all of us when each other succeed. Because let's say I say I'm really passionate about art. Well, if another artist is better equipped to get people into art, scratches somebody's itch more than I can, we got another person that's into art now. And they're probably going to be more open to the things that I care about for that. Um, and there's enough people in this world, there's enough people in New York City for everyone that says, I want to be an artist, to do it and to show people their art and to make people happy. You know, at the end of the day, we're here to experience life. We're here to make each other happy. We're here to experience happiness together. Um, and Gary is a person that embodies that. Gary is a person that understands. Um, that for him to share his knowledge, for him to, um, to elevate other people, really can only make the world have more things that he loves in it. And really can only do good for all of us as like inhabitants of the world. Um, He's an awesome dude, and I was not, um, I, I, I mean, it was such a ridiculous moment when, like, somebody said, like, I don't even remember, it was such a chaotic time, but somebody was like, yo, Gary V's buying creatures, and we were just like, what? Like, what the fuck? And then next thing you know, uh, he's, like, hopping on, like, my, my joke of a Twitter space where I'm trying to get people to make noises that they think sound like the creature. And next thing you know, he's FaceTiming me, and he's, like, you know, and then I'm at dinner with him, and, you know, and, and, and he's a dude where, like, you know, there are times where I've texted him, and I've said, Gary, like, I'm feeling down today. It's not that often. I'm usually a very, I'm a person with very high endurance, um, very quick resilience. I get that from my parents. Um, they have really, um, 
they know how to make it through through tough experiences um and uh but i remember you know i remember times where i've like felt down and 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 i've said to him like you know I, there was one time in particular where i texted him i said gary you know i'm having a tough day and it felt like my phone started ringing before i even pressed send <laughs> um and he says he says danny don't compare yourself to other people don't compare yourself to other people do you think that's a good use of your energy do you think that's going to take you anywhere do what you're doing and on that note there was something that i wanted to say before cleo that i that um that i didn't not because i censored myself or anything but because it just it turned into a different thought um you were talking about what the nft space is right now um the nft space is filled truly sincerely and this this is going to sound like the most pr prepared you know <laughs> response uh, and it's not um i genuinely sincerely feel like the nft space is filled with people that are so innovative in so many different domains um and we're just in this weird moment right now where people that do such crazy different things are all being grouped together um and there are a lot of people doing things that i don't want to do um that that don't make sense for for me it's not you know what i want to spend my life on um and i still like what they're doing um but this moment this crazy moment there was you know to talk about Gary Vee and Connor and I were, were were just at um at lunch um I'm a huge fan of oysters we had oysters at lunch and um I shout out oysters I don't know if anybody here likes oysters but it's a fun detail of my day um and um I it, it feels it feels such like such a fancy food I don't know it's just like I, I we're in New York. We're eating oysters. I'm not from New York. I didn't have oysters growing up, but you know. But um, but we were at we were at um, we were at lunch, and um, and uh, I brought up this musician that I know. Texted me today and said, "Gary V's got me fucked up," and I was like, "What? Like, what? you met Gary?" And she was like, "No, no, no. I saw this video that he made, and." In the video, he said that um, he said that TikTok. There's only on TikTok. You only have 18 more months. He he estimates, I guess, and I'm paraphrasing. I haven't seen the video. It's like you have 18 more months to to grow on TikTok. And and he was like, so I really, you know, I I, I recommend that. If you want to get something out of TikTok that you go full force for these next 18 months. And what I touched on was, well, well, what are people actually doing on TikTok? People are, um, you know, making comedy videos. People are making art. They're making music. If TikTok goes away, comedy's not going away. Music's not going away. Art's not going away. Now, I'm not leading up to here to say NFTs are going away. I will actually... I feel, I was going to say I'll bet my life, but, you know, listen, I'm not playing around with that. I feel very strongly that NFTs are not going away. But what will go away is this initial emergence that we're experiencing right now. Something can't be new forever. And right now, with how young the space is, um, everything is grouped together as NFTs. These things, these products that are completely different. And it's kind of crazy. Like, imagine if, imagine if we just grouped products together. Yeah, I'm going to the store. The store that sells everything. And it's like, well, you know, how is that really possible? And, you know, we, we, you know, we can try. You know, we got a Walmart. A Walmart, you'd think of it as it sells everything. But you know what? I'm looking around me in my apartment. I swear to God, the majority of things that I'm seeing, I cannot buy at Walmart. I could name things. I have a Bocarnia Recurvata tree. I'm not finding that at Walmart. I have this beautiful chalkboard. 
maybe I could find a chalkboard. It wouldn't be this beautiful chalkboard. I don't believe that I could find my paints at Walmart. I, do, I don't think I could buy jewel pods at Walmart. To take it back to that, whatever. So, you know, on this note of the, what is the NFT space right now? Where is it going? Um, my... I'm excited about everything. I'm excited to be able to witness everything unravel. I'm excited to be able to be witnessing what's happening right now. For my personal career and for the mission of, of, of what I am so excited about sharing, when this initial sort of people call it the bubble pop, even though that's a, we hate to say that, but people call it that, you know, when we sort of reach that point where it's like, you know, this is this is no longer this new moment. That is going to coincide not with NFTs going away, but that is going to coincide with NFTs really just being a lot more normal and us seeing way more things in our lives use Web3 technology. And all of a sudden... We're seeing, you know, Web3 in a pretty different light. And to me, I predict pretty confidently that that's a moment that will honestly benefit the things that I care about. Um, because the things that I make are really about engaging with culture and when we get to this point that um that nfts are so normal that web3 is so normal that culture as a whole kind of knows how to engage with that stuff um well then i'm in a place where i have the opportunity to reach people with really exciting things that they're not assuming um, are supposed to be something else. Because right now, as I said, all NFTs are kind of being, uh, the expectations are kind of being crossed where it's like, well, you have an NFT and this other thing is an NFT. This other thing does X. Why aren't you doing X also? And it's like, well, because an NFT isn't anything more than a digital asset. Assets can be so many different things. So, um, I think it is something for us to look forward to. I really do. Like, genuinely, I'm so sincere. Like, I really do think that, like, um, as a believer in this technology, that, um, that the future of Web3 is something really for us, um, to look forward to and and even for the people that are like i love i love things that are um really tokenomic focused i love things that are really finance focused that are really um investment focused whatever it is um and that's not to say that art isn't doesn't have the ability to be an investment like i'm not you, i'm not saying like legally i'm not going to say that creatures is an investment but i'm also not saying that it's not you know like whatever but um all these things that you like exist and have the opportunity to, to continue to exist um i just think it's a really exciting thing that um that the that more people will ultimately be in participation in this trajectory that i think is is really just like um ahead on our path Thank you, Danny, for that explanation um, and so much of your powerful insight on the space, a lot of what I completely agree with. And I think you've been able to paint things in a perspective that I think a lot of people don't consider um, just because you have so much experience being on different sides of the space. So I do want to kind of hand the mic off to print, but before I do, 
Uh, for those of you that don't know, that is actually sacred in his profile picture. It's my personal favorite um, out of all of the special creatures, you know. There's the wizard ones, and there's the chalkboard, and a few other ones, and they're all just incredible looking, but the sacred really gives me these ethereal vibes, really, I feel like, represents the creatures well. And Print actually paid, I believe, 13.6 ETH for it, so... You know, as I hand off the mic to you, Prim, why, like, what enticed you to spend so much money on a creature? Oh, man. Um, I think Creatures Community was one of the first communities that I joined, if not the first community. I was introduced to NFTs by my friend Winston Wolf, who introduced me to the creatures. And I remember myself that, like, those two weeks that I learned about it, like, Staying up at night and doing a lot of research, well, what I call a lot of research might not be a lot of research to others, but I then told everyone I knew, like, oh, you should buy a creature. Or I, I caught myself, like, I, I hit up my cousins. I was like, we should go five ways on a creature. At the time, they were, they were like, in maybe an ETH and a half, and ETH was at above $4,000. So... I came into the creature chat and I, I decided to start a business of printing people's NFTs on canvases, not just creatures, but any NFT, so I can buy my first creature. And there was a community member in the Discord that ended up DMing me and we, we had a long talk and he ended up set, sending me a free creature. And ever since that day, you know, that was like the start of my NFT journey. And, you know, back when I had 500 followers, and this creature was symbolic because at the time I didn't know anything about rarities. I didn't know anything about any of that. I go on one of these rarity sites and I had seen all the creatures, like all 10,000 of them. But when I went to the like rank one and to 20, it was like these unique ones. And the sacred ones just stood out to me because I, I like a lot of like holy stuff and, and you know, things that depict godliness. So this creature was, I've always had my eye on it. And, you know, I've done well in the space up until now in the six, seven, eight months I've been in it. So I decided to take this creature on the journey with me. And that is why I decided to spend 13 years on it. Leo. I, I really, I love your story, Print, for real. I, um... I really think that um, you are such an embodiment of understanding possibility and of understanding, you know, one's superpowers to make things happen. I personally just like, it, 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 it fills my heart to see people, when I talk about doers print, like, you, bro. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot, bro. And yeah, that's what we came into space doing, Cleo and I, and we, we just, we're just gonna keep doing. I know there's some people that want to ask some questions to the man himself, so I'm gonna open up the stage for some questions, and then we can see what we can get from you. Some alpha. Let's go. And that's going to what's up, bro? Uh, nothing. Welcome to the stage. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. Uh, Dan, I just want to say I'm a big fan. Joined the Creature Fam for like, I uh, mean, like three months ago or something. Oh, uh, yeah. me, me and my cousin, we shared 50-50 on a creature. Because, like, we always liked the art. And we always thought, talked about, like, we need to get a creature. So... We finally saved up and we got one. And now, <laughs> like, I think 20 minutes before the this town hall, we talked about getting one more. And yeah, <laughs> we are we're quite bullish. Thank you, Thank um, you so much. Um, Leo actually asked my question about Gary V, but I got another question. Uh, I know we got the game Find the Voice, where you can change your mouth. I played it a couple of times with my cousin, but I was wondering, will we have like something else like that in the future? Like, I know that's quite a unique experience that we will find our voice, but like, 
I mean something else like find. This is kind of, this is maybe a bit different, but like find or find our vision or, or something like that. Something else that we can change our trait, like a game. Um, I know, like I understand your question perfectly, um, and I'm gonna answer it as if I don't understand your question. It's gonna sound like that, but I really do. Um, I, um, I've reimagined a lot of the components of what I wanted to accomplish in that. That is my answer. There will be no shortage of ways to participate in the artwork of the creature world. Um, the next time you do it, it's going to be a level up. Okay, okay. Thank you for the answer. That felt like some kind of alpha. But yeah. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that, Teshu. I actually, Danny, I wanted to ask you, and I think the community, this is something that they would like to know. You know, we've seen you in a bunch of different, you know, media. You you were in the at Complex Con. You did the Vice documentary. We've seen, you know, remnants of your past in Converse. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that suggests that there might be a partnership? in the future with Creature World on any of these brands that you're tied to? In some yeah, way. funny enough, I, like, I actually, it's, it's, yeah, I, it's, it's so funny that you asked that question because um, I, uh, I was just talking about this today. Um, I, the short answer is yes. Um, the long answer is, I, like, I think, Oh, like a lot of a lot of people in this space um, kind of give more of a window into the behind the scenes of like, oh, you know, I'm about to meet with this company, I'm about to do this, and it's like, I I really um, I, I keep a lot of that so much to myself um, that my mom doesn't know, <laughs> you know, who I'm out here meeting with, um, you know, uh, and I also turn down. Um, most of the offers that we get. Um, so for there to be something that I say yes to, um, which there is, there's a few, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, the caviar in my eyes, you know, it's like, it is as, as I'm not settling, you know? Um, so yeah, there are, there is, there is stuff that i'm not saying um and then you, you know you talk about media i'm like i guess i'd rather people don't tweet this um because like a, it would be cooler if this was like a moment that like we all experience as if we don't know anything but um i actually have my first magazine cover coming um and that's like something that i thought i didn't care about um and then i was like walking down the street in la heading to an Erwan, if anybody knows that, it's like a grocery store with a hot bar. And, um, and it, and like, I saw it through my eyes as like a kid, um, that had very few people that believed in me. And the people that did really believed in me, but like, a kid that was really just misunderstood a lot. Um, and I kind of saw it through those, those eyes and I just started tearing up a lot. Um, and I didn't actually cry. I just did, I'm not actually crying right now. I'm tearing up, you know, but I'm not crying. Um, and I was just like, wow, like this feels like a hug that um that I really needed 
when I was a lot younger. And it's always better late than never. Beautiful, beautiful. So that that's something exciting for for the community to look forward to. I know a, a lot of people there. There, everyone's always trying to figure out what you're up to. You know, I know when they some. I think some stuff came in on hype beast with the clothing. Yeah, everybody was hyped about that. Everyone's just always trying to figure out what well, what's the next journey. Well, there have what's been like. Awesome? You know, I there have been talk about media. There have been like. Because the like, there's like this is a very. I I hope this makes sense. Um, in the NFT space, we're really used to um, seeing crazy numbers for projects, you know, um, and uh, and it's just kind of normalized. Um, but for somebody like myself, where I'm not an NFT artist. I'm an artist. And, and, and in the same way, I'm not a painter. I'm not a sculptor. I'm not, um, you know, I'm not anything. I'm me, and I make the creature world. You know, there's not a box that's going to work. Um, so simply put, like, people would call me an artist. I personally don't even really feel like an artist. But, um, uh, Word travels more about someone closer to me um, than perhaps about like a Pixelmon. I don't know. And I actually fuck with the Pixelmon art no matter what anyone says. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we've had like banging down our line. I'm not going to name names, but like um, when you think what are sincerely like the biggest, most prestigious publications in the world, um, like we've been in communication. We have been in probably over 50 hours of conversations. You know, um, where like everybody has been very very kind to me um there's you know people were asking for the exclusive on like you know this is like to break break creature world to the world and you know there and while a lot of people might not understand this and d disagree with this um i know what it looks like to be propelled into something when you're not ready. And I chose who I wanted to give that exclusive story to. Um, and they are comfortable with that coming out when I'm ready. And until then, they have been kind of riding the journey with me. Um, and... Um, Yeah, I was going to say something else on that note, but, um, you know, you talk about people are wondering, I guess, what I'm up to. Um, I'm up to a lot. And that's like, and that's, and that's, that's, um, that doesn't, you know, I, I'm also like, I'm learning a lot at the same time where I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I mean, I'm, I'm truly like, I, this is not like any I'm not trying to make excuses or anything, but like I'm young, like genuinely, like I'm 22 and I lost a few years to the pandemic. So like, <laughs> so like it's, it's a weird place to be, um, where, um, I, uh, I, I'm formulating the sentence. Give me one second. Um, I'm up to a lot more than people see and, and that people will ultimately see. 
and I'm definitely learning about how to take the same amount that I'm up to and um, turn it into something that people are able to um, engage with more. Um, and, uh, you know, every, every step up that I take where I'm like, oh yeah, like I know how to, um, you know, I know how to, how to do something a little better. There is, a, there is a delay before that actually, um, winds up translating into what we put out to reach people because, you know, you got to work a little bit in advance. I always, I always say like, um, if you're going to come out with something, by the time thing A is out, you better be done with thing B because um, you don't want to be there with people excited and you got your dick in your hand. And you're like, they're like, what's with you now? Like, it's, it's not a good place to be. Yeah, yeah. No, it's understandable. I mean, you're young. You still have a lot to learn. Um, you've done a lot in the space already. Being so young, I think you're probably one of the youngest commanders in the space. I don't know if anybody's ever looked at that up, but that's definitely something that's admirable. And, you know, you guys keep pushing, and I love the project. I'm going to keep investing in the project. Dude, and, and you know what, Print? Like, I really, like, I so sincerely, like, I want to make everybody proud. Like, I want to be, you know, I talk about being young and, like, you know, now, like, here I am getting my hug, you know, perhaps 10 years too late. Or not too late, but <laughs> that's a horrible phrasing. 10 years late. Um, you know, it's a, the, the point is the hug still comes, and, um, and, and, I, and I feel it really deeply. Um, I, um, I... I, I pause because I sometimes feel like a caricature of myself and sometimes, you know, it, that's a lesson to learn from Gary. Do you see Gary stop, you know, stop himself because he's like, I'm, I'm going to seem like I'm a caricature myself. No, like he, he's, he doesn't care and he doesn't care about, about, um, about semen silly and, and neither will I, I, um, I, I'm compelled by what I feel I'm here on this earth to do. And, um, and when I say I'm compelled, I mean like, you know, I am quite literally compelled. Like you put me in my resting position and my resting position is moving. Um, and I, literally swear to you that um there is not a person in the world um that i would trust more to literally never give up than myself and i just want you to know like i i am going to make you like how do i phrase it like uh You've put your belief in me, and um, and I'm going to be responsible for validating that, and uh, and having you be in a position where you're like, I made the right decision. Thank you, thank you. You heard it, folks. Go buy some creatures. <laughs> so I'm 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 gonna open up the stage for everyone else to come in here. We have like two people. And we have some questions in the back end that the community wanted uh, some answers to. Uh, we have truth.eth. What's up, bro? Hey, hey, thanks for having me up. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, Danny, you're amazing. Um, everybody here. Yeah, I'm actually headed to the airport. Just really was amazed to actually get on stage. But I had some questions for Danny, man. I, uh, <clears throat> I, was, I went through the struggle for a while as a kid. I was a foster kid for about 15 years, and I actually was one of the ones that was diagnosed with, like, ADHD. So it was kind of tough growing up because, like, the teachers and whatnot, um, it always seemed like an issue. Or, and, you know, and so the teachers always played a part in, I guess, somewhat of your growth. But, like, Danny, it seems like you, you, blossomed, you blossomed from, like, society's way of what 
they think at your earlier ages of your 20s, like you're 22 right now, dude. Like, first of all, that's insane. Like for you to come and, and really just uh, move the space like that, not alone, not, not only just like blow the space away, but you're continuing to create and create utility for uh, your holders. But like, can you really just take a moment to, I mean, talk or speak on the, what you had to do in order to break away from the chains that society has kind of placed on you in order to get where you're at right now? If I- yeah, a hundred percent. And I, you know, dude, thank you for the, like, that's an amazing question. And like, not something that is like, um, a common question. I really, I'm, I'm, I'm into this. And I also want to take one second to say, I was going to say this the moment you came up. I love your profile picture. I, I really like it. Um, so I'm taking one moment to like figure out what I want the starting point to be of, of like where I'm, I'm going silent for 10 seconds. My, my apologies if it was super deep. <laughs> no, no, no. This is like, I, I couldn't have asked for a better question. It's just like, um, I, there are two things I want to touch on. Um, my, my mom was actually my teacher in high school, um, which is something that Connor and I were talking about today. Um, and, you know, when I think of teachers in high school that, had my back there were two people and it's really connected to to what you asked um it was my mom and then it was an art teacher mr t and mr t was not the head of the art department and i was not in art in school because i was banned from taking art class (laughs) in in school (laughs) um uh, and that is kind of like a big part of, uh, of what I want to touch on here. Um, I was in fifth grade when I realized that other people had friends, um, and I didn't. I was in fifth grade when I realized that when kids were laughing, that they were not laughing with me, that they were laughing at me. When they would tell me to do something and then we'd all laugh, that I wasn't actually in on the joke. Um, and in retrospect, I was like, you, I had to know deep down. But, um, but I didn't. I didn't in... in, in you know, maybe I chose not to. Um, I value nothing more than friendship. I cannot, I genuinely, and this is like, when I, whenever anybody comes to me for advice on like business, anything like that, or I want to make something, um, my first piece of advice is do not do it alone. Even if you think and know you can do it alone. Um, the motivation that comes with doing what we are designed to do, which is being together, um, it, 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 you know, it fosters an accountability too of like, you know, we're actually doing this. There's, it, there's nothing more nourishing than being together, truly. Or I tell everybody, you know, don't do, don't, whatever you want to do, don't do it alone. Do it with somebody that you love. You know, um, I, um, I went to a new school, um, in kindergarten. I went to another new school in third grade, another new school in sixth grade, another new school in seventh grade, um, another new school in ninth grade. 
by the time I went to that new school in seventh grade, I remember realizing this is a fresh start. I've been through enough fresh starts where I understand that, um, that when you walk into a room, nobody knows anything about you. And whoever you tell them you are is who you are. Um, and I want to walk in this new room and I want to tell them I'm who you want me to be. And then I'll be who they want me to be. And everyone will love me. And I walked into my new school in seventh grade and I read the room and I read the other kids, the social dynamics, the hallway, whatever. And I was like, this is who I'm, this is who you're going to want me to be. And for the first time, I'm invited to every party as opposed to none. And there are kids that are sitting with me at lunch. And I have friends. And I'm social. Um, and I'm not happy. I'm really not happy. But it's the first time I've had friends. So I do 7th grade. I do 8th grade. It's time to go to high school. And I want to go to high school with all my new friends. No matter how unhappy I am. No matter how much I got a mask on, and I'm pretending to be somebody that I'm not, um, uh, I, I didn't want to lose that. So I'll, I felt like this is all I have. And my mom says to me, Danny, you can't go to our town's high school. Um, it's, it's not, it's really not a good place for you to be. You know, everybody, there was like, Kids are starting to do heroin and all these bad drugs and kids are winding up dead. And it's just like, my mom's like, this is not the place for you to be. This is like, not, this is dangerous. And she's a teacher and she teaches at a better school that's like an hour away, maybe a little more. She says, you're going to come to school with me. And I, I was like, no, I really don't want to. She says, come visit the school for a day. And I come visit the school for a day. And the day that I'm visiting, I was so disinterested that I literally took a nap during one of these classes that I'm, I'm a stranger at the school. I'm the guest. I took a nap in one of the classes. I'm talking the whole time. I'm like, I don't want to fucking be here. So I might as well just like make the most out of my day. Um, I leave. They tell my mom, he's not coming here. And my mom says, I will quit my fucking job <laughs> if you tell me my son's not coming here. So, yay, I'm going to a nice school. And, um, and I go to the nice school, and, um, and all these kids look at me, and they're like, I, you know, I got the bit on. I got, I'm, I'm, I'm all ready to, like, make friends, and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, you know, looking for attention, too, genuinely. Um, and, uh, and they all look at me, and they're like, no matter what you say and do and what you think you know, you're not one of us. You're not like us. Um, and I was like, damn, like, no, maybe I am. Like, I'm just like you guys. Like, oh, like, maybe I'll join the football team. Like, you know, <laughs> I didn't, I, I, I don't know if any of you have met me in person. I, uh, I'd like to say I'm 5'8", and it might be 5'7", and some change, you know, like, uh, I did not belong on the football team, um, but um, I, uh, I, I realized at a certain point that um, I felt so incredibly misunderstood, so incredibly alone. You know, there's so many times where I just became so close to this idea that the greatest, um, the greatest plague that had ever happened to me was having to exist. Um, and, you know, you wake up in the morning, you hop in the shower, and you're like, damn. 
can I really just keep on doing this? Can I really just keep on carrying the weight of existing every day? And, it, and, and you arrive at your answer, and the answer is no. Then you get out of the shower and you start your day. And next thing you know, you're in the shower again. It's the next day. It's like, damn, I made it another day. Can I really do this again? No, definitely not. But then you do it again. And, um, but I felt so misunderstood. And it made me so angry. I'm not an outwardly angry person. I don't scream. But it made me angry. It made me resent the people around me in my life. And I was like, none of you... None of you see me for who I am. I don't want to see anyone. Like genuinely so fucking angry. I was like, I don't want to see anyone. I, I wanted to get into fights. Like genuinely. I wanted to like, like I was like, sh- I felt like everyone had just let me down so fucking much. They call me in the office all the time. They'd be like, Danny. We know you're a drug dealer. I'm like, I'm not a fucking drug dealer. And then they're calling in all the other kids and they're like, who's Danny selling drugs to? They walk away. They're like, oh, Danny must be a drug dealer. It's like, you know, it's, you know, so like, there's such a culmination of things of just like, I'm mad at the world. The world has let me down. Nobody gets me. I'm, I feel so fucking misunderstood. So I'm like, I'm done. I don't want to talk to anyone anymore. And I stopped talking to everybody. And I'm just on my own. I come into school. I'm just doing my thing. I don't talk to anybody. I don't care about making friends anymore. And I had a few friends. A very, very select few. And I didn't want to talk to them anymore either. Um, and it's like, you know, you feel so bad. And there are a few people that are nice to you and it doesn't match how you feel in your head. So you're like, well, I better get rid of this so my surroundings match how I feel so I can tell that this is actually real, that I'm actually genuinely alone. I'd rather see it if that's what it is. Um, and There's a certain point when you know, you're know you angry, you're crying, whatever it is, where there's the calm. And uh, when I was really young, my mom used to come in my room when I was crying. And, um, and she would tell me a story to distract me. And the main character of the story every time was called Crybaby. And, the, and Crybaby would go on an adventure. And at the end of the story... Somebody would ask Crybaby, Crybaby, why are you crying? And Crybaby would be like, I don't even remember anymore. Um, and I would be calm and I, I would realize, oh wait, I'm not even really crying anymore. Um, and I'm there and I'm kind of in this like numb calm. And I realized how misdirected my anger was. And how how little responsibility I had taken for my own situation. Because I'm here so mad feeling how misunderstood that I feel. Um, and, uh, and I'm like, well, how could I expect any of these people to understand me when I walk around with a mask on? How would I even know what it felt like to be understood if I lie to myself every fucking day. If I try to make myself into everything that I'm not. Who am I? Like literally, who am I? If somebody walked up to me and, and looked at me and in their eyes, they were seeing me exactly for who I am, I would have no idea. Because that person, me, would be a stranger to me. And I began to paint. I had never painted. 
I would always draw pictures, but I began to paint um, almost by mistake. And then one day, I made a painting. And I got lost in my head. And I learned something about myself. And I did it again. I learned something about myself, and I did it again. Until I was at this point where I was like, damn, I think I am starting to understand who is Danny. Um, and I had something I, w I was looking forward to. Um, and one thing leads to another, where I'm at this point where I'm like, you know, I think I found something beautiful. And I don't want to experience that beautiful thing alone. Because this whole thing started with me and other people. With me wanting to feel close to literally anyone. Um, so that's how Creature World was born. And that's how Creature World is meant to be. Um, so the mission really fast from the first moment that I was sharing artwork was can we can we bring people together with this? Um, can I take that journey and make it something that many people can experience um, and that we can experience it together so you're not, you know you're not alone any step of the way um, so that's my answer yeah, I, <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I'm stoked up there for like a bit man. Uh, I think a lot of people really, I think a lot of people really like can really, uh, <clears throat> sorry, um, relate, relate to, and like that really is something that I've been through in foster care. Uh, it's really tough to kind of find people that really understand, um, maybe to understand just, just what like happens in life and what suppression is without really realizing that like a lot of people are normal. Like they have normal lives. They don't have the type of struggles that like some people go through. And like you really captured it from a certain angle through NFTs and Web3. And I think that's why so many people are able to connect with you. It's just because like deep down, we all feel a little lonely. We're all trying to find ourselves. Like we're all here to try and learn and grow. And I think that's like where you come in. The universe has placed you in a position where you are able to unlock the doors for everybody else to kind of come and really grow with you, through you, for you. And it's making me bullish. I've never been able to afford a, uh, a creature. So I'm going to like look into trying to find him to get this journey, man. Like this journey is amazing. And I'm in the earth. So thank you so much. Dude, thank you. Wait, you said that you're in New York? Is that what you just said? Uh, no, I'm in the airport. <laughs> oh, you said I'm in the airport. I thought you said, my bad. Um, dude, thank you. I mean, there's also like, I I would feel like I was lying to myself if I didn't include one thing from, uh, from, from as a response to, to what you've said. First of all, thank you. You know, it's the hardest thing to say, just like, thank you to like, you know, to accept. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm always too hard on myself to, to, to take anything that, that, that feels like something good said about me, but um, but um, the you know the greatest honor is is really like to I don't have words that don't sound silly for real and, I'm, and I actually am censoring myself because I'm a human being but I guess that's like part of what I'm trying to touch on which is uh, I think when all of us look in the mirror you see a human being and you see how um, how much every human has to learn um, how imperfect every human is um, that you know None of us are gods, um, but sort of on that note, um, if another human being has the ability to make an impact, 
I think it's always good at the same time to take that with the breath of, well, they're just like me. And that means I have the ability to make an impact. Um, so, I, uh, my, my uh, usual response, Danny, one second, brother. Yeah. Can you please make an audio book so we can all buy it, please? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, probably not. <laughs> but, like, who knows? Uh, it's very rare that I, like, sit down and stop moving. And this is, like, this feels like, um, feels like the first time I've done that in a moment. Um, which is really cool. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Anytime anybody says to me, like, you know, you, you've, you've done something, you've done something. My, the only thing that I really feel like I can say is, and you can too. Yeah. You know? Thank you, Danny. Um, <clears throat> I think that was an amazing story. A lot of people in the chat are really relating to it. And um, for me personally, I always love listening to somebody's awakening story, you know, their kind of enlightenment period of um, when you pretty much, you know, in my words, I always say, realize that everything that's kind of happening to you in life is is kind of a manifestation of your own thoughts and, and behaviors. And when we all kind of come to that conclusion in life, life, the way we view life becomes a lot different. And I think that's really reflected in your art. Your art itself is is really enlightening. Um, so thank you for that story. I know a lot of people relate to it. Uh, we actually have somebody on the stage who just bought his first creature while he was listening to your AMA. So I would love to to bring him up. And I know he, he wants to definitely say something to you. Boy, because Zach. Yeah, thank you for uh, having me on the stage here. And uh, Danny, I really don't have a question. And I don't want to take up a lot of time. So other people can ask questions and be a part of this but uh you know i'm fairly new to the nft space and i attribute my successes to my membership within this community and with that success like i found myself buying into projects that i felt like i wanted to be a part of that community and Tonight, listening to you, I'm, I'm going through some stuff right now where I'm making some major life changes, and a lot of what you said resonated with me. And like for the first time, I feel like I really purchased into a, pro a project where I knew I wanted to be a part of that community. And I, I just want to thank you for giving us time and letting us hear you. And uh, that's all I got to say. I'm going to step off, but thank you for letting me uh, come up on stage, guys. Dude. Thank you so much. It really, it really means a lot to me. And it's like, you know, you taking the moment to share that, it, it has an impact on me more than you know. Because I'm like, it's, it's a weird place to be of like, you know, you know you're, you're, you're 22. Like, I mean, I was, I was 21 when I, when I put out the project. And I, I was barely ready to take care of myself in the world. Um, and then all of a sudden... I got to learn how to take care of something a lot bigger than myself. It's scary. And there are a lot of times where I kind of just want to hide. Um, and to like hear that sort of like ping pong of like what I want people to feel um, get received and then come back to me and then I feel it too. It makes me want to go out in the world more. And, uh, and, the people that are going to reap the benefits of that are, you know, a lot of our peers. So, dude, thank you so, so much. I, um, I know I, I, I'm happy to answer any whatever questions. I, I feel like everybody's been so patient. Um, and, and I know that there's like a raffle, a giveaway. Um, so I, I, if, if, if you want to like move on to that, like, believe me, like, you, like I'm happy to like, I'm happy to, to, close the chapter on tonight i'm also you know i i'm happy to do whatever but i just want to be sensitive to like everybody that's here yeah danny thank you for for being here thank you for taking the time out to come join us and answer a lot of our questions i think that's it for all the questions so we'll wrap up and we'll give away the creature i'm gonna i might give it away on 
inside the Discord. I'm gonna talk to Cleo and see how we'll we'll give it away. But I'm gonna give away one of my creatures to the audience today. You are you are like such a force of onboarding. It's so crazy, dude. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's what I set out to do, and that's what I'm gonna keep doing. So, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Wait, I print. I don't think we did the traveling creature together yet, did we? No, we haven't. We gotta. That's what we gotta do. Yeah, we gotta do that. Hell Let's yeah. That awesome. Well, Bye, thank guys. you guys so much for having me. Thank you for thank coming, you, Squeeze, you, the other man. Hell yeah. Have a great night, guys. Bye-bye.